Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a, another episode of Note to Self Cozy Life Talks, where we are exploring the journey of self discovery and being there for one another. Today, we're going to be delving into the topic of nurturing friendships in adulthood, uh, trying to find friendships, because let's face it, adulting can be tough and finding friends can be tough but having a strong support system makes all the difference. So join me as we navigate the ins and outs of adult friendships and discover ways to cultivate meaningful connections in our busy lives. So let's start to talk about how when we honestly just find the most (laughs) randomness friendship and it sticks with us whether it be for a year or a decade growing up it's easy to make friends in school and it's easy to make friends when you're in communities or clubs so those of course naturally those are going to be our go-to for me it was school work and any communities i had outside of school i know that growing up i usually had a different best friend um at least for that grade all the way up to middle school honestly maybe fifth grade and then i had like a main core of a couple of girls i would be a part of a uh you know just the triad kind of friendship and i had one of those for sixth grade then i had one of those for seventh grade and then the one for eighth grade ended up being my main group for the next four years all the way into high school so i would say it was interesting i don't want to say i hopped around from it but it was so easy for me to just get infatuated with different things and of course based on where i would live it varied when for what I would have in common with said friends. I would say it was so easy for me to kind of hop to one friend or one friend group to the next because it all felt very shallow and on the surface. We didn't make any proper connections. When I was in school, I don't know. I just thought that these people are always kind of going to be there. Not really thinking about when I graduated that no, they're going to have their own lives and there's a good chance you're not going to talk to anybody. The one and only person that I still talk to from my youth, um, from high school, from middle school, is one of my best friends. We've been friends since the seventh grade when she ended up moving to Um, ended up moving to my neighborhood as well as of course you know going to my same school and it was funny because I personally found friends in the weirdest way or I knew that I was kind of (laughs) weird so when it came to wanting to be friends with someone I knew that I had to be a little bit more outspoken about it and then once I have kind of got my person or group I just latch on to that. I latch on to that. And I mean, I don't let them go. (laughs) As long as, of course, if it's mutual, it's easy to not let them go. Right. But I met her in the seventh grade and we also had another friend that moved and we, the three of us just kind of became like attached to the hip. You know, it was us versus the world and i do very much still love the person that i am friends with we she's getting married and she's got a lot of things going on for her and i'm also you know trying to figure out my life but it's it is good and it feels good to have that friendship that has (laughs) it's so weird to say but has lasted over a decade and while yeah you know i all the time i'm wondering What are people doing? Um, I hope they're doing well. Like, and that's where I do love the digital platforms like Instagram or Facebook. I'm not a Facebook girl, but I love Instagram. Um, I don't talk to this one particular girl, but I always loved her. Um, and I always hoped great things for her. I love watching her stories and seeing her thrive. And I'm like, I'm just so happy for her. And like, I hope she continues to have a good life. And while yes, checking in on people is, you know, that's a good thing. Sometimes the friendships that you made growing up, 
they're not friendships that you have to continue to nurture because essentially either you were just basic friends or acquaintances, you know, it's like, it's not as deep as, oh, let me reach out to them. But I always do think that doing that is something nice. But when it comes to trying to maintain those connections through life transitions, and that's like different jobs, uh, moving, getting married, getting divorced, having a family, it's, we all have so much going on. Um, it's hard to keep up with that, right? So it's, it's interesting. So I think the key is to just really prioritize the friendships that we are able to keep, the ones we are able to nurture. Um, even if that's a, a call every once in a while, a text every couple of weeks, I think that's important. Um, and now jumping into like the next kind of like main thing, I definitely think prioritizing quality over quantity is important. While I understand if you move to a new city and you want to find a bunch of new friends, we'll definitely talk about that in a second, but I, I do think this is more so just talking about the basis of prioritizing quality over quantity. Investing time and energy into friendships that are truly going to nourish our souls is really important. Even if that means that we are going to have fewer but deeper connections. I personally have about five, mm, I want to say I have about four girlfriends that I love um, so much. One of them is my roommate. One is the one I've been friends with over a decade. Uh, one is my college best friend. I love her so much. And then another one is <laughs> one I met at my first corporate job, which is about a year ago. I love her a lot as well. So I have those four. I feel like, yes, I do have a significant other and I do have family here. So like I currently live in the city where I grew up in. So I would say when it comes to social life, I'm chilling um, pretty decently. I'm also not a person who <laughs> likes to have, like, who likes to do a lot of social activities. So having a lot of friends <laughs> when to do that, it's kind of a lot. But my point is, I do like the fact that I only have six friends, or even if I had the one friend, um, when I have time and I'm not focusing on myself, I'm able to put that time back into each friendship a little bit more effectively versus if I was trying to keep up with 10 or 15 or 20, 30 friends, it becomes harder to stay connected and nourish those friendships. So when you just prioritize being friends with really good people, even if it's only like two people, I'm sure they would have your back. One of them would probably be the one to, for example, drive the getaway car. Um, one of them would probably be right beside you running over to the car. Uh, my point is, even though you have fewer connections, these connections are gonna get you through a lifetime. So I think it's really important to prioritize the quality of people you're being friends with instead of having to make so many friends. Now let's talk about when it comes to like, you're in a new city, you're somewhere else and you want to make friends. So when I was, I want to say about, uh, I was a sophomore in college. I did the Disney college program and I was going with nobody I knew. Um, I was very scared. And for the beginning, like the first month or two, I was so homesick. I didn't want to be friends with anybody. I shut myself off, but then I reached a point where I realized, Victoria, you're being rude. Also, you're honestly being detrimental to yourself um, because in that program, in that type of space, you do, you should have friends, even if it is a couple. So I just started trying to be more open. And when it comes to uh, friendships, I really tried to lean on the people that I, in my section of, like I, I worked in Animal Kingdom Asia, really leaned into my circle there and I fell in love with all of them. Um, and now I don't talk to them, but uh, whenever I do check Facebook, the very, very occasional check, it's always good to see what they're doing. And I'm so happy for them. I think majority of them are doing good, but when I was there, it was so good. And that's another thing. Some people are just meant for a season of your life. They're not meant for the whole book. 
maybe they're just there for the a little bit of a chapter um so i don't feel bad that i don't necessarily keep up with those people like on the daily weekly yearly because i do think it's all right i still wish them well um nothing bad happened it was just more we got back to our lives after we left florida um or even if they stayed in florida and continue to work for disney it's just we got life keeps moving on so for me majority of them were just part of a chapter in my life and it was one of the best chapters ever they were all so awesome i had so much fun uh working with them and i'm i'm really happy that i opened myself up to doing so now back to my point because i i started it off with let's find like kind of a way to help you find new friends if you're in a new city so if you're in a new city or just like a new area and you don't have a lot of people that you're able to turn to or if even if you're just trying to find a new friend group maybe your old friend group was a little bit toxic and you're like i got to get out of that let me find some people who are chill and nice and sweet um let's go into talking about a couple of different ways you can start finding common ground and having that lead you to some awesome new friendships. So, finding common ground. What I'm more so discussing or talking about with that is we should be working on finding ways to connect with others based on shared interests, values, and experiences. So, whether that's through book clubs, hobby groups or volunteering, these are all different ways where you can connect with like-minded people and really start building something there. Of course, you know, while you can't force a friendship and I don't think you should, I definitely think those are good places to start. Um my significant other, my boyfriend, he has so many friends through um a game called Magic the Gathering and I believe you know there's like a lot of little uh game card shops around um but he I want to say they met through school um it's either they met through school or they met at the card shop but they really I would say nourished their friendship by playing these games like every week um practicing and like really getting invested into the craft of playing magic because let me tell you um I've started learning how to play it and it's deep <laughs> there's a lot in it that's how he's met and kept a lot of his friends um they continue to chat in discord and he he's multiple i do think guys handle friendships a little bit differently he's like you know there's a lot of his good friends um if it's not about magic or something very relevant there there are people that he's so good friends with but he hasn't talked to them in like a year or two and i'm just like that's so weird <laughs> i'm like i could never um like if that was the case it's me it would feel like we're not friends anymore if anything we were uh we're uh, acquaint acquaintances but he's like no nah, it's chill and i'm like okay boys I, but um yeah so essentially finding that common ground now i will say there is something called Bumble BFF and I'm sure you may have heard of it especially if you're looking for friends. Now it can be a, it could be it could go both ways. It can go both ways because my one of my friends um she's been trying to use it because she's from New York and I think I'm probably her only friend. I mean she has a couple of acquaintances here from her old job too, but I'm her main friend that she hangs out with. So she's been looking for like more friends to that are closer to her that she could also, you know, like that can provide her different things for her life as well. Um so all these good reasons and she's been trying Bumble BFF. It is interesting. It can either go to the right or it can go to the left. It's interesting how weird people can be, I guess because it's more so of a friend wise it's not viewed as something serious versus if you were using Bumble for the dating side. I don't really know, but it's a great way to at least start and put yourself out there. Get to start talking to people, get your social wheels going. Um I think it would be really really helpful if you tried it or just opened it up, see what it is about. But 
I think really finding like, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? I personally, I joined a book club for Charlotte that I'm so excited about. I think the first meeting is on the 18th. I do still have to pick up the book that we're reading, but I'm so excited to do that because I'm excited to talk to people and on how they feel about for example, books and um, writing and just getting to know others outside of my regular group because I do want that social aspect too, you know. Um, I don't necessarily need 15 new friends, but I do want something that kind of gives me community. So I do think trying to lean into what you're passionate about or what you are wanting to like what you care about. Like, I also want to volunteer at an animal shelter. I think I can probably meet some awesome people there because if they also have a love for animals, well, boom, we're automatically going to bond over that. But of course, it always, it varies because there are times where you could either not mesh well, like maybe you have that one core ground, but maybe you guys have different senses of humor. Maybe you have different beliefs, values. So just going off of your hobby or passion, it's not guaranteed that you're going to find a friend, even though they like books too. That doesn't necessarily mean you guys are gonna be best friends. There's a lot of different things. Like so many people end up being best friends and they have one thing in common or they are the complete opposites of each other, but there's something there that just clicks, you know? And I don't think at this moment, if you're looking for new friends, I don't think that's what you're looking for. I think you're just looking for a start. You're looking for a way to break out of your comfort zone, your comfort box, and really branch out and just start seeking these connections. I think at this moment, not that I want them to be shallow, I think you should look for once just to start just to test it like hey let's grab coffee like like next weekend this weekend let's talk about a couple of things that we like um it can be very very small you know and i think that's where a club would also be great because you get more people around you that you're not just alone with one person and it makes it a lot easier kind of takes the pressure off a little bit but don't go into looking for friends trying to look for your new best friend i feel like when you get your best friend, your best friend comes to you when you least suspect it. It's honestly kind of like love <laughs> because it is a different type of love. It's love, just a different type. Um, some best friends, uh, you need to build that friendship. Sometimes it's immediate. Um, I know my college best friend, she's honestly, I love her so much. Um, when <laughs> I love telling the story we were in our freshman year seminar um, for lord of the rings let's go i was just sitting there and i was looking at my computer and it was like i guess the internet was down and so the little dinosaur for google was there if you remember what that looks like you're an og you're the real one um if you don't maybe look it up but essentially it was a little uh just a little symbol of a dinosaur and i was just staring at it and i'm like huh well, I guess that's it. And then she, with the audacity of this woman, <laughs> she decides to reach over and press the space bar. She's like, look, this is a game. And um, if you play it, uh, yeah, no, simple as that. It's like, just you just play it like this. And <laughs> in her words, she said... <laughs> She said that she really thought that I was going to kill her with the look I have on my face. Because, like, especially when I don't know you, it's like I'm very shut off. And um, I I think it's more so because I'm trying to protect my heart. Um, I try not to do that as much anymore because I'm aware of it. But I do think that's the case. And so I just had a really straight face with her. And like, did she just really? Okay. And then when she did that, I was like, huh, that's kind of cool. And so she backed away and then I started playing it <laughs> and, um, and she was like, yes, small win. <laughs> and while that wasn't the start of, we were immediate best friends, it was our first proper introduction. I want to say I became really good friends with the girl, a girl down the hall for me. And she was good friends with my best friend. And I think she took me to a show where my best friend was performing. Um, 
and I'm like, my best friend is an amazing singer. And so I like literally, I think after that moment we had, the first time I spoke to her again was after the concert. And it was like, you were amazing. And like, oh my gosh. And then I would, we just started like slowly merging together our groups of friends. And we started connecting a little bit more. And I mean, weirdly enough, like one thing led to another. It was kind of slow within the first six months. But then her roommate, she had enough of her I lived by myself I didn't have a roommate and she's like do you want to swap roommates or like do you want to come live with me and so for the second half of freshman year we became roommates and then we were roommates for our sophomore year oh that means when I did the Disney college program I was a junior <laughs> I hate to admit it, but you guys, this was like a long time ago, so bear with me. But um, we became roommates for the first two years. My point is, with that, so I don't get off topic, it slowly came to be. And currently, she's personally, well, yeah, she's down in Florida. She's doing the Disney College program. Actually, she did the program, and now I think she just works at Disney. That's how that's going. Um, and she's so happy, and she's having such a great time, and I'm so happy for her. It's just weird when I tell that story and I really think about it, like, it was like a kind of like in if you put it in romance terms like a slow burn and then once it happened it was a really great and powerful thing um i can't imagine like i hate the fact that she doesn't live here but um i can't imagine not having a life where i don't know her um and it's the best thing and my main point with that is don't go into a situation looking for friends looking for that off the bat because that kind of thing it either builds up or it just comes out of nowhere you'll never know so I definitely think take it with a grain of salt just go in start breaking down your walls get out of your comfort area and just meet new people see who you connect with and yes you can start with your common ground or you can start going to like working at a coffee shop uh going to a park like and doing those things that you truly enjoy the more you do it you're going to be at a coffee shop just working and maybe an, another girl sees you and she's like, hey, I see you often. Um, would you mind if I sit here? I'm like, and that could be something that could just start, you know, so take advantage of possible opportunities and also just lean into what you like and who you are because naturally the people who are meant to be in your life, whether for a chapter or the whole book, will be there and they will come to you when you're least suspecting it or you know again you know trying to do those clubs like trying to volunteer putting yourself in the situations to make friends or even find love is the best way to go about it um you can use bumble bff but <laughs> my personal track record with that hasn't been the best so is what it is but that's my biggest suggestion there now, when it comes to kind of going back to what I was talking about earlier about nourishing those friendships that you do have, um, but also nourishing the friendships that you would get if you're trying to get new friends. I think it's very important to kind of keep these in mind. So one, we've got the role of communication. So you want to treat a friendship, in my opinion, maybe a little bit better, but honestly, at the same time, just like as equal as a relationship, because a lot of the key things that you should do to make a relationship successful is kind of what you should do to help with a friendship as well. Um, but I feel like when it comes to making sure that your friendship is going to thrive I definitely think we need to make sure there is open communication if anything comes up you need to address it like as adult as you can um, or at least take some time before lashing out like I know I whenever I'm in the heat of the moment or I'm anxious angry upset I do my best not to talk about it right then and there I try to just 
wait I think about it and then maybe in 30 minutes an hour even maybe a day I'll be ready like okay let's sit down let's talk about this this is how I feel they can talk about how they feel and then maybe you can work on a solution on how to pair together I think that's the best way um, but really making sure you're having that open communication setting boundaries but also making sure that you're appreciating each other I feel like it's so easy for us to when we're having problems just go on and on and on and on and vent to them and be like this is how I'm feeling <sighs> okay well yeah that's it have a good night something like that we should also be taking the time to really hear them out see how they're feeling and also like talking about like do they even want to deal with negativity because I feel like even though it's a new concept for me I've been trying to be like are you in a place mentally whether it's that they're feeling unwell or it's more so if they even want to hear it are you in a place for me to vent um and then to make sure that i'm also a place for them to vent it's about really having that equal respect and just appreciating the things that they are able to provide you in the friendship and honestly their company because i mean you guys are friends you know it's like the love there should be known it shouldn't be something where you're like oh i have to talk to them today or i should talk to them it, it, i feel like it shouldn't be a, sh a chore this is somebody who you really care about so really appreciating them is so important also making sure that you're supporting what they're going through um celebrating any milestones and this goes back to you too like they should just as equally want to support your new job or like celebrate the fact that you got a new job or um if you started a youtube channel and you hit 500 subscribers they should want to have like a mini party um if you want uh to celebrate the fact that like yo that's a big deal so definitely just reflecting on the joy of celebrating each other's achievements and providing unwavering support during challenging times just fostering a sense of camaraderie and mutual growth is so 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 important it goes back into appreciating them you appreciate their talent you appreciate their worth you see who they are sometimes this is stuff that you know maybe you need to just try to remind yourself to do before it comes naturally but i think it's huge to just keep doing keep trying um, and i think that goes a long way because you will be keeping to you will be trying to consistently be there for them making sure that you are balancing your friendship and your self-care your self-love essentially your well-being making sure that you're good too it's definitely a delicate balance between nurturing the friendships and also prioritizing yourself um, but that's kind of where setting boundaries can really come into play before you um, have to experience burnout for example my friend hit me another friend up and uh, um, one of my other good friends about going to a plain white tees concert yesterday um and technically i had the money for it and it was 48 dollars. and i'm like that would be amazing i've been itching for a concert um and it would be fun to go out with the girls and hang out and have a good saturday night but i am also a little tight on money and i want to make sure anything i use that money for either it's to fuel me like whether that be food or just something i need making sure that my cat has anything that she needs um, before i get paid again and just trying to be more conscious like now while that doesn't necessarily look seem like self-care it's kind of it's financial self-care i'm trying to be mentally cautious cautious of what i do so i turned it down because i would rather that 48 dollars go to i don't know a new clean effective um piece of furniture that my cat needs or like um for example she has an automatic pet feeder making sure that the freshener in there is replaced and that way her food can stay fresh so i just wanted to make sure that that 48 dollars could go to something that would be more important versus going to a concert that i would enjoy yes i want to make memories and experiences but i also know i have to put myself 
first in some of these situations. I feel like I've been treating myself a little bit too much. So with that being said, I will make sure to go to trivia next week, see them, see how they're doing, have fun that way, um, catch up, all that good stuff. But I had to turn this down. It's a, and they understood 100%. I told them why that it was rent paycheck and that I needed to be just cautious with my money and they understood 100%. I do think they still went and I hope they had a blast, but I didn't go and that's okay. So just setting boundaries and making sure that you're also putting yourself first when you absolutely need to. I feel like if it's your friend's birthday and there's a date with a guy, even if you've been wanting a boyfriend for like a long time, It's your friend's birthday. I feel like it's obvious what you should and shouldn't prioritize yourself for sometimes. But just in case you didn't know, let's make sure we're prioritizing your friend's birthday. Because there's a chance that the guy's not going to work out. But your friend will be there to help pick you up. So that's when I really think we need to be prioritizing our friendships. And then last thing I did want to talk about, so if if your friends live in a different city, you can still do this, but it would be a modified version. So I wanted to talk about creating rituals and traditions. Of course, this is going to kind of be determined based on yours and your friend's schedule. But if you have a friend that is on a similar schedule or you know they're going to be off and you're going to be off definitely try to coordinate a time maybe if they're not in the same city you have a virtual movie night like that's where i think covid help (laughs) covid still took a lot but um where covid helped us is by giving us a way to connect more effectively online So watching a movie together or taking a quiz or playing a game online together, maybe every Wednesday night, it's the girls night and you're just going to put on a TV show that you love and you're going to binge it together and then catch up as well, even if it's for 30 minutes. But being able to do something like that or if they're in person, if they're in the same city, having that physical movie night, having a physical girl night. Like, for example, me, I go to trivia once every week and I catch up with two of my friends and it's really good to see how they're doing. We catch up on all the hot gossip um, and really try our best with answering these questions. We do not win majority of the time, but it's fun to try and see what we know. And sad when we see, dang, we don't know as much as we thought we did. But it's fun. The girls, they they usually get like either beer or sours or seltzers. I'm usually a cocktail girl, so I don't like drinking those. So I'll probably get water, get some food, and just hang out. And it's a good night. These, just having these small rituals or things that you do consistently just helps with building bonds and really deepening them and creating lasting memories like if one of them or both of them move away or just were unable to do trivia in the future I'm gonna understand I do right now we usually have things that pop up so but I'm gonna understand and while it hurts it's always gonna be fun to think back on the times that we had like we've had some really awesome amazing moments they've been really really fun i love having my trivia nights and we can always create new traditions um me and my friend that we've been friends since you know middle school with we try to have a brunch date every couple of months just catching up going really into detail because you know of course we can call and text but she's always so busy and i have things to do as well So a lot of the time, having like an undivided attention just to catch up can be really hard. So we try to have brunch every once in a while. So I definitely think trying to have these these events, these things that pop up, I'm honestly going to possibly put together because it's going to be expensive. So I do have to like really think about it. But I would love to have like a girl's trip once a year every year that I think that would be amazing but my point is just doing something that you and your friends would want and love and just keep doing it it's gonna be so easy to follow up on it after the first one too because like hey you coming over next week for game night you coming over for cocktail night 
are we going to have our like fun activity night where we go try new activities like something like that just really really helping to continue to nourish your relationship with your friends and and if you care about them i think this is something that should just come naturally to you you know your friendship best you know what can you do what do you think they would really like um and some of the things that i just said is like i want to make sure that i continuously keep doing and bringing back to me and last but not least i really just want to encourage you guys to make sure that you're expressing the gratitude for your friendships that enrich your lives um, and to make sure that you're cherishing the moments of laughter, love, and shared experiences. It's a crazy world out there and uh, we know that tomorrow's not promised, but you can promise your love. You can show up for the ones you love and I think our friends deserve that just as much as our family and um, the person that you're with. I know that depending on the stage of life that you're in it can vary. When you're married you have to put your partner and if you have a family you have to put them first but for me I also do think that continuing to nourish your friendships as well as the other part of relationships in your life is just important because sadly what if something happens and for example you get divorced right um who's gonna be there to make sure that you're eating who's gonna be there to have like to hold your hand while you're getting back out there into the dating field to listen to you rant about your ex who's no good your friends and of course you know your family as well but we're talking about friends today (laughs) so just make sure that you are taking the time to really show up for them when you can still prioritize yourself uh but at the same time think about what's more important in that moment And if you're looking for new friends, really take the advice I talked about earlier um, into consideration. Get out there. Get out of your comfort zone. Just start. Be open. Um, And if you're like me and you kind of hold everything to your heart and you don't want to be open, take it easy. Take it one step at a time and know that you'll get there you don't have to force yourself to try to change but be willing to accept small small changes small things that can help you get to the result that you want so as we navigate the complexities of adulthood let's remember that we're not alone on this journey i think that's my biggest thing for this podcast and By nourishing friendships with intention and realness, we can create a support network that uplifts us through life's highs and lows. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Note to Self Cozy Life Talks. Whether you are commuting or getting ready to start the day, or maybe you're just listening to to whenever you're able to find it. really appreciate you taking the time to listen. I think that's huge. And just remember, again, you're not alone on this journey. I am also going through a lot of the same stuff and I would love to hear your your thoughts. If, if you're on the YouTube channel, if you're able to leave a comment and let me know your thoughts, let everybody else know your thoughts. If you have any tidbits on how to help somebody with their journey when it comes to finding friends or comes to just continuing to improve your current friendships, definitely leave it in the comment section. I would love to hear what you have to say, and I know everyone else would as well. But all right, so I will go ahead, let you guys go, and until next time, stay cozy, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.